So you've read the self-help books, gone to therapy, and done the inner work. But you're still feeling overly stressed and disconnected. Sound familiar? Hey, I'm Zach Campa, certified breathwork coach. And I'm Annabelle Dura, certified somatic coach. And we are the co-founders of The Truth Is Love. The Truth Is Love offers simple, sustainable, and scientifically backed body-based practices to help you find the divine in the daily grind. In other words, we're arming you with somatic superpowers designed to harmonize with your hustle, not hinder it. And by taking the time to listen to this podcast, you've already started the journey back to the love that is within you. If you enjoy this podcast episode and are ready to foster more love in all aspects of your life, give us a follow, hit the subscribe button, and welcome to The Truth Is Love. Thank you so much for being here at the first interview for the Truth Is Love podcast. Annabelle and I did our rant. We've got some meditations up, but Elizabeth is our first guest, which I am so excited about. She was actually the first person that came to mind to interview for the Truth Is Love podcast because her values and the way that she walks in the world is very aligned with what we believe at the Truth Is Love and what we care about embodiment, practicing presence living in service to your life, to a calling, to a mission. She does all of those things so beautifully. So I'm super excited to have her on. Just to introduce her first, Elizabeth Rose is a certified functional women's health practitioner, an expert on female hormones, and a teacher of cycle wisdom. She also happens to be one of Annabelle and I's best friends, and we are so glad to have her on the podcast today. I'd love to start off just by hearing about what got you into your work. Yeah. So originally I feel like what got me into this work was my own health struggles and my own, uh, quest, I guess, for wanting to feel good and feel connected to my body and really come into myself. And I think what's really sustained my work and continued to inspire me is recognizing how, under-resourced women are, how women just really haven't been taught about their bodies and don't know how to really care for themselves hormonally and cyclically as, you know, we were intended to. And so recognizing that and just in friends and clients and over the years has been what has kept me in that work and made me want to continue to go down that direction. Yeah, that's beautiful. What do you feel like when you say women haven't gotten that education necessarily is what it sounds like? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that what you yeah. kind of see it as? What could you expand on that a little bit? Just what you yeah. see, where you see those patterns and how they show up and just with your clientele and the patterns you see collectively? Yeah. So I think that bigger picture collectively, we can see that there's a major severance of feminine energy and living in a really masculine dominated culture. And I think most of us can admit that now and see that very clearly. Most of us. <laughs> most of us. <laughs> most of us can. <laughs> if you see and Barbie, then... You know, hopefully that helped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm honestly, I love uh, looking at the history and how I, I get super interested in how we got to where we are. And I feel like that's a whole other rabbit hole. But just to kind of, you know, give a short a little piece of that, women were the original healers, medicine holders, using more subtle forms of healing working with nature, using herbalism, holistic modalities that interact with the elements and the earth. And of course, that is that type of healthcare is not something that can be patented or claimed or colonized or, you know, sold in this particular way. And so there has been uh, so much erasing of kind of these more traditional ways of healing. And in that process, 
you know, a lot of that goes hand in hand with birth keepers and doulas and just wise women healers who held this cyclical earth integrated way of working with the body, working with the mind, and also not seeing physical, spiritual, and mental health as separate things, but really as one thing to be supported. And so as the kind of erasure of that way of working with healthcare took place, we've gotten now to where we are, where we see uh, ailments as very compartmentalized. We treat them with a pill. We uh, we we look at things mo- mostly from a very linear perspective, not really understanding the whole person. And hormones are a big part of my work. And hormones are really uh, they reflect our how we've cared for ourselves on a physical, mental, and emotional level. They're impacted by all three. And our hormones dictate to the body. They're the chemical messengers that are telling every single uh, organ and function in the body how to perform. So it's so clear how we can see that connection. But because of where we've progressed with medicine and um, and that goes hand in hand with just the modernization of society, we have really moved away from these traditional, more cyclical, more earth integrated ways of healing. And I think myself and other women in this space and healers are are craving to reintegrate these ways back into our world because I think we see how the current model doesn't it's incomplete and it doesn't really work, especially for women because of our cyclicality, because of our hormones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And one thing that you said that I thought that was perfect. One thing that you said was that like, it can't be patented early on in your share mm-hmm. night. There's something about that that really resonates, which is like it, it can't be boxed. It can't be in pill form alone right and that doesn't mean there's not from what i understand or what i'm understanding and understand from our talks about your work and learning from you about your experience as a woman and and coaching in this work is that it's not that that means that there isn't any value to the modernization and that we haven't gained tremendous clarity or that health hasn't improved in some ways but that when we try to make it a one size fits all. And we don't take into account really the entire human being, especially for Mm -hmm. women as you know, you talked about the hormonal part of it, the the physical, the mental, the spiritual, like there's so many different components to all of us. And we're so layered when we don't, when we don't take into consideration the entire picture, we can't really tend to someone's health and wellness fully. Right. Yeah. 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 It's it. It's to me, healing and health is so layered and it's almost become oversimplified, but also overly complicated. Like we've moved so far from nature, uh, which to me that goes hand in hand with the severing from the feminine, severing from the earth, severing from mother earth. We've moved far from nature. Nature has all of our solutions and mirrors back to us exactly what we need in order to thrive, exactly how we need to move and the cycles that we need to go through in order to thrive. So in a sense, we've overcomplicated it and yet we've also oversimplified it to, you know, quick fixes and pills and even making it as simple as diet and exercise. Like there's so much more that goes into our well-being than just those two things because we're not just physical beings so it's such a layered conversation and I think that that's what I'm interested in being able to offer and speak to is you know if you're not getting the results that you are seeking just through whatever kind of modality that you're using whether it's a medication or birth control or diet or exercise, maybe there's more to explore uh, beyond just those kind of mainstream things. Yeah, that's great. And the thing that you said about nature, I found really interesting that there's been this, the word used was severance, 
And I think we can think of that in terms of like, of course, we're not as connected to nature because we're all on our phones and we're all inside. Yeah. And there's like that side of it, which is like, obviously we all know what it's like to sit in front of a sunset and just how beyond words and how healing that is. But even I think of it in terms of when it comes to food, which I've gotten so much education from you on that and how our food is treated, especially in the U.S. Can't speak yeah. to other countries, but especially in the U.S., how our food is treated, which is mm-hmm. obviously connection to nature, to the lands, to animals, to plants, all of that yeah. stuff and, and how it nourishes us and how it heals our bodies because food can be incredibly healing, which I've learned from you. And it's not just getting what you need. <laughs> it can be yeah. nourishing, which is one of Elizabeth's favorite words. Um, yeah. And I've learned to love that word as well, because now that I've eaten her food, if you ever get the chance to have one of her meals, it's incredible. One time she made us Annabelle and I this butternut squash soup that was unreal with uh, <laughs> meatballs that were meat that had been treated very well, which was great. And I even through that experience alone, having that meal, like I could feel in my body the next day because you treat food with such care and you give mm-hmm. it so much attention and love and you treat it like a meditation and you take time to you take time, you take time and energy to really put love toward it. And you can feel that. And the next day I woke up, I was like, I feel great. (laughs) And it was crazy to notice the difference between when I typically throw up, you know, or throw together a meal. And, um, but that connection to nature too, with our food, like the connection to our food, the connection to the sunset water, you know, like, you know, natural water and and trees, all that stuff. It's kind of, it's all of that. when you say connection to nature, right? Absolutely. It's like one of my teachers would always say that the energy that you create something in or make something in is how you'll feel when you consume it. So Mm. whether that's a meal or talking about, you know, I think about this with processed food, right? It's being made in a lab and by machines, right? Like that's the energy that you're taking in. Or medicine, you know, think about, I think herbalism is the oldest form of medicine and herbal remedies are more subtle forms of medicine, but they're incredibly potent. I think a big part of their medicine is also the medicine maker themselves and their intention to create this tincture or this salve to heal something. That's the energy that's going into it. And I've always found that, and what I believe is that's partially the efficacy of them. It's the plants and it's the plant spirits and our intention and our spirit and our energy going into that thing. So making a meal is no different. That's beautiful. I love it. So what would you say, kind of segueing a little bit, but what would you say is one of the key things that is often missing for women when it comes to their health and wellness journey? Like what's one of the key components That it feels like when you come, a client comes to you, they're curious, like where it almost feels like a blind spot. You know, is there like a blind spot that you run into, or maybe there's a couple that you run into that kind of repeat themselves. I imagine there's a couple because it's nuanced, (laughs) right? You said it's like, it's the whole human. So there's, there's multiple components to it. Yeah. I'll, yeah. There's two that come to mind. I would say, you know, first and foremost, just kind of along the lines of cyclicality and our hormones, something that I'm so passionate about is relaying how essential it is for us to understand our hormones and our cycles. Most women don't even know that they have four phases to their 28 day menstrual cycle, that their brain changes by 25% during each of those cycles. They're essentially a different person four times a month. And even just that, not understanding that part of ourselves, to me, it's not just about hormones. It's, it's about not being connected to ourselves. If we don't understand how much we change and transform over the course of 28 days and then how that affects the next 28 days and the next 28 days, that's such a huge and foundational component to who we are, how we feel, how we behave, what we think, all of it. And to not have that understanding to me feels it's just insane. Um, <laughs> like it's so crazy. I appreciate so the crazy. I appreciate the honesty. I love it. I love it. Bring it. <laughs> Bring fiery Elizabeth. <laughs> we got to shake yeah. shit up a little bit we with got- this information. <laughs> 
We do. Yeah, it gets me really fired up. <laughs> um, never seen it before. Never seen you get fired up about it. Really? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say that that piece, as well as I think um, the fact that there's always an emotional component to physical symptoms. And some people are really open to exploring that. And I find that those people are the people who get the most healing or the best results is when they're willing to dig a little deeper and understand how they became a host for whatever ailment they're experiencing and then use nutrition, herbalism, supplementation, nervous system regulation, all of that to kind of clean up the damage is how I like to kind of describe it. But if you don't understand or see the, the, the initial seed that was planted to kind of allow that thing to manifest, um, you, I, I believe in what I've experienced in my own life and what I've seen is you'll just continue to manifest different symptoms until you really understand the emotional or energetic root. So I think those are the two things that are really left out of uh, healthcare in general, but specifically women's health and uh, are things that I'm wanting to build more awareness around. Yes. Yes. It's so good. The, the cycle wisdom thing is in, in the awareness I've never actually heard you say it that way yet. The that you're almost four different people. Yeah. I don't want to sound rude or misogynistic in any way with any of the things I say on this no, <laughs> podcast. <you're> <laughs> I always say like, I, I feel a little bit like the Kens and Barbie sometimes still. Like you know what I mean? That like sometimes I feel like I'm on it as a, as a man that has a woman that's very strong, that's aware of her cycle, that has a healthy cycle. She's educated me. And sometimes I still yeah. do feel like the Kens that I'm a, a little okay. bit out in no man's land doing my best. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. But, Anyone who knows you knows that you're the furthest thing from misogynistic. You're like the most epic person. So. You're so sweet. I <laughs> I just, yeah, feel a little bit like the Kens sometimes. But I was saying yeah. it's, it, I've never heard you say that it's almost like you're four different people and that most women don't understand that that like yeah. you have these four different phases like that alone like it's so simple and so important and you know i hear annabelle and y'all sometimes talking like i'm in my luteal <laughs> phase i'm ovulating <laughs> I'm, you know yeah. BMS, and you know like y'all are very aware of where you're at and so i hear it enough yeah. now that i know a little bit about each phase but to me like it's crazy to me that just growing up with lots of friends that were girls doing theater mm -hmm. and having, you know, my cousin who was really close with that, you know, as a female and her friends that I was around all the time, like, I never heard any of that stuff. Now that you mentioned that, like, I never heard them talking about that openly until you came into my life. I've never heard any of these things either, which even though I'm not a woman, it seems like as a man, I should also know those things to be supportive of this process, right? To be understanding to this cyclical monthly mm -hmm. process and the the mm -hmm. nuance of it too not just like oh because i feel like it's kind of cut and dry right when when we hear about this process it's like pmsing and period talk mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's talked or it's spoken about in a at least from my observations it's spoken in a, about in a way that is almost like that's the inconvenient part and then the rest of it is yeah. like the normal part yeah. but like what yeah. you're saying when you lay out the four the four cycles and i've heard you talk about them it's like it's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you have thing. more to say about it. <laughs> I was going to maybe try to talk about it a little more. I was like, this is where I'm going to stop. <laughs> because yeah. my, my education stops about there. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the best way to understand the four phases of the cycle, and this is why, you know, it's this information is, of course, super important for women. But to your point, it's not this is relevant for men too and all people, whether it, even beyond being able to support the women in your life, because it's really that women embody the cyclicality that exists within all life. Like it's built into our bodies and 
the, that cyclicality mirrors the four seasons. So if you can think about how different each of the seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter are, that's essentially the change that's taking place within a 28 to 32 day period on average. And the fact that we don't give energy and intention and understanding to that is really, again, just this kind of mirror for the way we don't honor cyclicality in our own lives and in nature. And even being able to understand that there's a time in the cycle when women are really energetic and magnetic and feeling really confident and feeling really just kind of that on top of the world feeling. And then there's a time as we descend is the word I like to use towards menstruation. It's actually about getting in touch with these more uncomfortable aspects of ourselves. Uh, You could call it the shadow or just parts of us that need more attention and love. And this information isn't just relevant for women. It's just that we have those cycles and that rhythm encoded in our bodies. So we are kind of the example of that. But moving through those seasons and that cyclicality is relevant for everyone. I also just wanted to, yeah, I want to say in response to that, one thing that you mentioned is the metaphor that it's like the four seasons. Mm -hmm. That's stunning. Yeah. Like that's actually so beautiful. Yeah. That this cyclical process happens every month and that it, and the way you're connecting it back to nature and you do through your work, it's, to me, it's not just about, I don't know, it seems like it shouldn't be just about the education and the awareness, right? But like the reverence yeah. and the beauty of like, yeah wow, like within mm-hmm. this body, this one human, you know, can have this entire process happen and have reflected within them the the cycles of the world, you know, of, of yeah. our reality. Yeah. And from what I've observed within you and Danielle and even Annabelle, when y'all observe and have a sense of reverence for that cycle and the different parts of it. And you really almost pay respect to them. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the really magnetic, is that luteal? The really magnetic. There's an ovulation. Yeah. That's follicular and and ovulatory, which are spring and summer. Okay. I was close. (laughs) (laughs) One off. (laughs) One One to the left. Right? Because there is the Zach luteal come first and then follicular ovulation? Well, it's all a cycle, so it's nothing really is first, but the oh, the follicular phase yeah, actually comes off. first. The follicular phase comes first because the follicular phase is after menstruation. So follicular phase is like the rebirth after winter. Winter is menstruation. So winter menstruation is like the death and then the follicular phase is the rebirth. Um, and then there's ovulatory and then luteal and then menstrual, but Got you. continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit like the Ken still, but the, <laughs> the thing that I was going to say about that is of course it's lovely to be in the magnetic part of the cycle and in, in all of our lives. Right. And in the magnetic mm-hmm. part of the life cycle where we're like, I'm attracting it all and I feel good and I'm talented and people love me and my gifts matter and I have purpose. But what you're saying by even relaying, I think kind of the other side of the coin, you know, getting into, you know, some of the winter moments or the moments where it's a little more stretchy or, and even the word descent that you use, Mm -hmm. there's a descending that happens as you move Mm -hmm. into the menstruation part of the cycle, paying real reverence to that and to, and to even, death itself you know and like yeah. a the, just the that energy and we've talked about that in our culture not just on like a spiritual level because i think when we talk about it, it could, it's very easy when we get into this territory for it to feel like it's like kind of woo woo as people say or spiritual and stuff but yeah it's not just like 
in terms of that, but it's the discomfort on like a cultural level. Like if we even look at capitalism and the mm-hmm. systems, mm-hmm. it's a discomfort with anything that is not production, success, mm-hmm. evolution, expansion. Like there's this like really, and yes. we've seen it since COVID too. Like since then, like we had an opportunity where we kind of descended, right? Collectively. Yeah. And we had the opportunity to really see and feel what that was like to be separate and to be even scared and to be in pain and to be there. But the second we got the chance, we were back to production doing, which is all masculine energy, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of what we're talking about here when we talk about these cycles and on a macro level and not just a micro level, the cycle that is happening within an individual body that there's a lack of reverence, not just for the individual, but there's a lack of reference or reverence on a collective level. And that's, we talk about it all the time, Annabelle, me and you and Danielle. And it's like, why, (laughs) you know, like, and funny enough, like I keep bringing up Barbie, but it kind of touches on that. Like, that's kind of the whole thing. I don't think it gets as into the, obviously the hormones and the stuff like that and the, the nitty gritty, the specific stuff, which is you going into what that movie talks about and like the, the, like the depths of it and the in-depth, you know, the details of what's actually happening on a physical, spiritual, emotional level for a woman. But Mm. yeah, I think to me, what I'm really getting at is the lack of reverence, not just on within the individual and, and in the collective and that the truth is it's stunning. Like that Mm -hmm. the cycle Mm -hmm. needs all components and that when we try to bypass the descent or the death mm-hmm. side of the the death side of it, it puts strain and mm-hmm. on the body, not yeah. just the individual, but the collective body. Like it puts strain exactly. on it and it, it burns it out and it yep. gets sick. And mm-hmm. then here we are. And there are people that come to you yeah. that are clients that are like, I'm sick and I don't understand. I have yeah. 10 different symptoms. I don't know what's happening. They're changing every week and month. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's kind of how it happens, right? It's like a lack of reverence. And obviously there's some logistic steps that you can take For eating sure, well, yeah. you know, like that's, but that's where we get into the nuance, right? I don't yeah. know if that all made sense. No, I mean, you're literally so, you're so on it. It's like, and this is why to me, this work is so, I, it's just, I love it so much and it feels so important because To me, if we look around with kind of where I see the imbalances in our collective, it's it's exactly what you said. It's not being able to honor the dissents. It's not being able to oscillate between expansion and contraction. It's thinking that contraction is bad or wrong. It's it's trying to bypass, like you said, contraction and, and this more inward, slower energy. And when we do that, we not only get sick, but on a, one of the reasons I love teaching about the cycle to women is, yeah, it's one of, it's like, this is how you prevent burnout, but it's also, it's burnout comes when we've gone too far in a direction that isn't in alignment with who we are. So when we're not honoring the expansion and contraction, what happens is we get to a certain point in our life and maybe we've experienced some physical success perhaps, or, you know, we've hit all the kind of milestones that society tells us we need to hit in order to be a quote successful person but we're sick and we look around and we wonder whose life we're even living because we didn't take the time along the way to expand and then contract and then expand and then contract because in the contraction is where we meet the parts that need to transform. It's where we meet the parts of us that need to be let go of. It's where we figure out what isn't working. There's a lot of kind of chaotic energy that can can arise in the luteal phase, uh, internal chaos. And that's designed that way because it shakes everything up and it challenges what we thought we knew. 
And that's why women and the cycle is so fascinating because if we, if we did revere and tune into it and study it, it's, it's really this like keys of life. It's like, you know, it teaches us so much and yeah, it's through that chaos that we realize what is out of alignment and what can't come with us as we move into this next cycle. And if we're not taking the time to do that, then we get to a point in our lives. And this is what I, I observed in myself, even on my own journey. And then watching this pattern with clients who are really, you know, successful in the physical realm, but feel so disconnected from their bodies, so sick and feeling like I don't even like this. I don't feel good in this. I, yes, I'm glad that I have made it to this point and I have a certain level of comfort in my life because of it. Um, but now they're trying to kind of figure out who they are and figure out how to get to where they want to be at 45, even 50, you know, trying to figure out how to actually get into a place that feels good because where they're at doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Yeah. That's hard to be like 50 and to be like, to be sick and to be like, whoa, I'm, how did I get here? And to even, yeah. like you said, have success in the physical world, to have mm -hmm. the money, to have maybe the family, the nice car, the house. Mm -hmm. And you're off in no man's land. Like, who am I? Because there's this mm -hmm. disconnection, which mm -hmm. isn't women's fault certainly no it's and that's sad it, it's sad and like i even feel it as we talk about this it too yeah you know it's not just a it's it's again this is why this information understanding cyclicality is relevant for everyone we are all cyclical beings it's just amplified in female bodies i think of my dad uh who you know he had a huge health crisis in his mid fifties. And that kind of shifted a lot. He had to pause on his career and it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's that building, 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 expanding, 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 pushing, pushing, pushing early bird gets the worm. That's what he always used to say to me. Like, just keep going, put your head down, get to work. And those attributes are absolutely admirable and necessary, but they can't, be without the stillness, the self-reflection, the assessment, the course correction, the shadow work, the feeling. When you, when you lose touch with that, things start to go south. They start to fall out of alignment because then you need almost a, a, a really big wake-up call or a large kind of descent to balance out all of that forward momentum that didn't get balanced out along the journey with that ebb and flow kind of energy. So it's like this big push and then this crash versus the sustainable. I think that's what's really uh, key to this kind of cyclical and feminine way is it's sustainable and it uses, and, and that ripples out in our world. Like how can we be regenerative with ourselves and sustainable with ourselves? Because we're just the, the micro to the macro. Everyone wants to understand how we can be more sustainable and regenerative. Well, it starts with ourselves. It's all mirrored. Our environment and how we live is just mirrored. It's just mirroring back our internal state. So how do we be sustainable and regenerative with ourselves? We honor cyclicality and we honor the ebbs and flows of energy. And it's an ongoing practice. There's times in my business where it feels like, you know, all these people are coming through and workshops are filling up and I feel really on top of everything and that feels really good. And then there's times where it kind of feels a little quieter and I'm, I learn over time to not make that a, a bad thing, but that's what we're conditioned to think is, oh no, how do I get more? How do I do more? How do I make more happen? And maybe there's 
yeah, what if maybe it's just actually a time to honor that slowness and that rest and maybe work on some of the more back end things so that you can hold more, so that you can hold more success. And it's the same with ourselves. When we move into the luteal phase, for example, it's a lot about self care and tending to ourselves so that when we move into the next cycle and we move into the follicular phase, we have the energy and the vitality and our cup full so that we can really use and harness that power and confidence and magnetism to our advantage. But if we didn't tend to ourselves and rest and kind of pull back, then we'll go into a new phase at a deficit. And so this is this is the practice, I think, for all of us. But mm. again, just amplified with the female cycle. Yeah, amplified is a great word. I heard it said once, kind of in regards to the cycle, I can't remember, it was one of, uh, or it was a spiritual teacher that I respect, Rob Bell, say that tomatoes don't concern themselves with the fact that it's not tomato season. When it's not <laughs> tomato season, they're not like, oh, dang it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not making, you know, I'm not producing, you know, I'm not growing enough. I'm not, they just are. They're like, it's not tomato yeah. season and it's okay. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. when it's tomato season, they're like, we're here. There's energy, yeah. there's vitality, there's healing, there's opportunity, all yeah. that comes to the surface, but there's no shame in yeah. being, and I think that's the tricky part about it, right? Is there's been so much shame placed on us collectively mm -hmm. for not being productive. So of course, mm -hmm. like it comes with all these emotions. And I think that's also one of the scary parts about this process is if you're willing to commit to this which mm -hmm. Annabelle has and I have in my own way as well. Obviously, it's not amplified in the same way, like we said, but I have committed to this process of getting acquainted with the descent, getting acquainted with those yeah. death moments. And there's an element of it that is also scary. For That's sure. really scary. That's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not, maybe I'm not making as much money. What am I going to do? You know, mm -hmm. like moments mm -hmm. like that. And it may not be just mm -hmm. about money, but I feel completely disconnected from myself or even the question, like, I don't know who I am at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like that mm -hmm. kind of comes with willing to be yeah. or being willing to step into that descent, into that death, like being willing to say, I have no clue who I am and mm -hmm. all of the perceptions that I've created around productivity and success and or that I've tried to create around career and how people view me it's like a willingness to kind of strip it away and yeah. that can be really scary yep but there is an yeah. element of kind of having to go through that in order to yeah. do it it doesn't mean that you can't experience love and connection through that and that you don't deserve yeah. all the connection and that it's so important that we have the support from people like you, from coaches like you to be able to help someone walk through that. That's why your work is so valuable, but from partners or friends or family, mm -hmm. that's why we have other people, you know, and that's why we have resources and, you know, for Annabelle and I in our work, somatic tools or breath work or meditation to help walk us through those moments. It doesn't mean yeah. that we, we, we don't stay stuck there, but it no. is scary. There is a scary component to it, which I think it's good that we acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. and that we learn how to love ourselves there too. And exactly. And then the love that you experience when you walk out, the connection, the knowing, mm -hmm. oh man, it just, it's, it's amazing. It's like a it deepens yeah. and all of a sudden you're actually trusting yourself and you're like, oh, I can, there's a resilience to it yes. too. You know, like a, your skin is a little thicker, like, I've walked mm -hmm. through hard things. And then when you're facing adversity in your life, you don't get, you don't crumble, you know, yeah. you, you're able to kind of walk in the light uh -huh. in a different way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's soul building. It's like, there's a moving towards the darkness or the parts of ourselves that we can easily not be in touch with when we're go, go, go. Um, and at the same time, when we don't have those external things to tell us who we are, the validation from doing really well in business or feeling really confident or being like, this is what I do. This is who I am. 
something that's really common in the luteal phase is actually to question everything. Most women experience this process unconsciously. So then what does that get experienced as? Depression, anxiety, and then we just label it as PMS. And while, yeah, PMS is definitely a real thing and and a lot of that actually is a hormonally based thing that can be worked with on a more physical level, but there is relevance to moving through these kind of waves and internal chaos in that phase. And again, one of the things that can come up is questioning, who am I? What am I even doing? Do I like what I'm doing? I'll find that often. And the the thing is, though, is that doesn't mean that what you're doing is not actually just because those questions are arising and that kind of ego death is happening and that stripping away of what you think you are and whatnot is is going on. It doesn't mean that you're actually losing those parts of yourself. And that's mm. where we learn through honoring cyclicality that what's coming up isn't necessarily the the truth or the end where you're going to end up, but it's, it's a process. And so then you can start to trust that process. I feel like I'll question so many things about what I'm doing during, during my luteal phase. And I'll be like, is this even where I want to be putting my energy all this time that I've spent on this thing? Am I, what, like, do I even want to be doing this? Should we be living here? Should, you know, and, but if you know not to, and that's the other mistake that I've helped, uh, that I've seen with uh, clients is they'll make decisions from that space. And that's another, this is why this information is so important because that's not what that time is actually for. It's about letting go and kind of allowing yourself to go through that process until clarity sets in and you feel that sense of centeredness again. And then you can make decisions from that space. But Again, this is where we haven't really been taught how to work with this kind of chaotic intelligence is what I like to think of it as. It feels fearful because we don't understand it. But when you start to embrace it more, you see the rhythms and the patterns and you don't need to react to it. You can be like, okay, clearly something's getting shaken up. And usually what the result is, is ah, actually, you know what needs to happen is I need to pivot in this in this slight way or I need to set a boundary here with this person or I, it's, it's never this complete like, oh, I'm losing everything or I have to change everything. Uh, I mean, maybe sometimes depending on where you are. <laughs> it, can at in your life, but, it can be no, occasionally. It can be occasionally. If you get hit with one of those, yeah, we've it's going to be real beautiful on the other side. But yeah, ooh, yeah, those ones are tough. But that's those <laughs> yeah. are probably a little more few and far between than our brain yeah. than our brain, you know, thinks. Exactly. Our brain tends to think that they're, you know, it's gonna be every when time. We're just, yeah, when we're it's when we're wa- when you're walking this path of just honoring ebbs and flows on a day to day basis and on a week to week basis and. A, you know, and that's just integrated into your life. It doesn't mean that everything is falling away and slipping away. It's just, you're moving through a process with it. And I think that the more, I think that if we could learn how to support people through that, and then people learn how to support themselves through that, that would change so much. We would be so much healthier and balanced. Like I said, a lot of times women experience that during the luteal phase and it's labeled as depression and anxiety and PMS and birth control is the option, is the solution. When really they could just be living in a way that's misaligned with who they are and they're, it's being brought up in that, in that period of the cycle, because that's what that period of the cycle does is it stirs up what's, what's been kind of hidden underneath the surface. So This is where having that understanding, we can actually give true support to women versus just kind of dismissing their symptoms as PMS and medicating them. Right. Our bodies get loud when something, like you said, is out of alignment. And so bringing it back to just the brand, to the truth is love, like that's those opportunities. I love the word descent. The descent is an opportunity to learn to love the parts of yourself that have never received or known love too. Yeah. Like it's not just to go down there just to be down there. (laughs) (laughs) 
which is what <laughs> it feels like when you're in it. You're yeah. like, you get into the why, why me, victim mentality, why God, why world, why life, is this happening? But what I see and is like such a core tenet of our work, Annabelle and I, is how do you learn to love those parts of you? And to yeah. allow them to have the proper space that they deserve so that you can truly heal. Because yeah. once you've integrated those parts and they've gotten the space that they need, you'll find that those parts are really well intended. The parts of you that are afraid, the parts of you that are questioning your life, if you can actually give them the space that they deserve and you can learn how to hold space for them and meet them with love, things start to change. You start to yeah. heal. And that's like you said, the process ends up being something not that we're just doing for each other, but that we're doing for ourselves. And there's a sense of mm -hmm. empowerment in that. That's self-love. Yeah. But we talk a lot about mm -hmm. self-love in society and we talk about it in books and classes and we we logicize it. Again, it's a very mm -hmm. it's been emasculated or you know, it's been treated as a masculine thing. Like from yeah. the neck up, you know, yeah. emasculated is the wrong word for that, but from the neck up it's been masculine. <laughs> that's my yeah. word for it. <laughs> or yeah, from the exactly. neck up, like, this is how you love yourself. You use these mind tricks and these tools and these techniques and you're logical about it. It's like, no, this process of learning to get in tune with your body and getting in tune mm -hmm. with the cycles of your body is learning to love all of the parts of yourself. The fear, the love, the joy, the physical discomfort and pain of being in a human body, which is so uncomfortable, yeah. right? Sometimes, like, <laughs> even for those of us that, like, have done some of this work and I'd say we take care of ourselves and eat pretty well and pay attention to all these things and we have our practice like it still mm -hmm. can be so uncomfortable to be in a human body regardless and so yeah. like learning to really love yourself through that is an act of, of sovereignty and, and I think of empowerment so but yeah, yeah thanks for everything you said about that I yeah want to get into we only have a couple more questions they're gonna be a little bit quicker um, so yeah, let's say you're a woman who is struggling with hormone imbalance, nervous system dysregulation, digestive issues, and a regular cycle, all the symptoms, you know, and more that you've yeah. shared with me. What is one thing that you'd tell that woman? I think the first thing I would tell that woman is you are meant to feel at home and at peace in your body, which is very different than what we're told, especially as humans in general, but especially, again, a lot of women have just, they just get written off. Oh, it's, it's because I'm hormonal. It's because of this, because of that. But those things aren't normal. They've been normalized, but your intuition isn't wrong. Like you are meant to feel good. And if something even subtly feels off, like feeling like it's really hard to get out of bed every morning or feeling like you're bloated after every meal or like that's, there's some, there's a different experience that can be had. And I think that that's, I guess that that's, that would be my answer. Cause there's of course so many things that we can do to work with those things. But I think a lot of us as humans growing up in our world, don't even know that there are true solutions or that this isn't something to just write off or that we can feel really amazing and energized and clear and centered and at peace with ourselves. Uh, we haven't been told that. So, and we can do that on our own accord. Like we can take that, we can take responsibility for that and, and make that happen. Yeah. It's a damn good response. Yeah. So what I, what I hear is if you don't feel at home in your body, if you feel like, you know, whether it be unsafe or uncomfortable or in pain all the time in your body, that it doesn't have to be that way. And yeah. that there's an, another way, that there's mm -hmm. another way and that you can get in tune with the cyclical nature of your body, of your spirit, of your mind, of all of it. And mm -hmm. it can be different. It yeah. can be better and maybe more connected to love. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And 
yeah, it feels like that's like kind of your mission right now. You know, not, not that it won't yeah. change, you know, you won't, you're very multifaceted and talented. So you may do different things in this lifetime, but like, as I've witnessed you, it's watching you on this mission of like getting this information, not just on a logical level, again, like getting this body information, wisdom, you know, cycle wisdom, as you call it out to women and yeah as much as you can. And it's just so inspiring to see. My last question is, is there anything that you, for men, for the men that are listening, is there anything that you want us men to know that would allow us to support women in this process, yeah. in this cyclical wisdom? I think really recognizing that you have a lot to learn from, from this process and it's not separate from you. We amplify it in our bodies, but this is the cycle that, that drives all life, all creation and your experience too. So really, I think being in a more curious role, uh, again, so many women are still learning about this. So I don't think that you're necessarily expected to be experts, <laughs> <laughs> but just being curious, being like, huh, recognizing that there's such a there's such a distinct difference between the way male energy and uh female energy at least in female and male bodied people operate so differently and we all have masculine and feminine energy right i think that all beings are meant to have a balanced ratio uh maybe we lead with one or the other but so recognizing that we are different, but also that there's so much to learn and be curious about and understand that actually not only pertains to, you know, your sister or your partner or your whoever, all the women in your life, but also to you. And that's like step one, as this can be more integrated into our, our world, there's actually so many ways that we could harness this energy that women hold to our collective's, you know, highest potential. But frankly, we're like super far away from that. I think <laughs> step one is just, it's just quite frankly, acknowledging, <laughs> acknowledging and being curious and being, being willing to learn, I would yes. say. That's so good. Yeah. Curiosity not just for the female experience, but finding that within yourself. And the more that men find that within themselves and honor that cycle within themselves, even though it may not be as calculated, you know, day wise, yeah. which is insane to yeah. me that it can be, you know, for women that it's like, can actually almost be understood on day, you know, the, the four, yeah. the four waves, it does happen within men and being able to honor yeah. that, which is, beautiful. And then we'll be able to honor, yeah, that feminine energy and really allow it to heal, heal individually and heal the world. So yeah, there's one more thing that I didn't actually send you a message about because I didn't want you to think about these questions before I asked you them. <laughs> we came up with something okay. that some podcasts do it as well, uh, where they like do some kind of, you know, rapid fire questions at the end. Yeah, this yeah. first one's a little tough, but Annabelle, we didn't have a name for it. And last time on our first rant that we did, she decided to call it one, two, three, go so that you have to one, two, three, go, you got to go. <laughs> That's what she came up with. You could kind of hear her saying it too. Probably you haven't heard the podcast yet, but she's like, one, two, three, go. <laughs> you have to say it. <laughs> um, you have to answer the question. So the goal is to answer the question in one word or one sentence. So just to keep it, okay. keep it brief. Yep. So this okay. one, when I put it down, I was like, this might be a little tougher to answer in one word or one sentence, but I want to see what you, what you say when you are given those parameters. Okay. Greatest lesson that you've learned recently. Mm. Darkness is essential. That's good. That's really good. You did it perfectly. That's awesome. <laughs> And a good one. And it ties in with the theme of, of all the stuff we've been talking about. One thing that you're proud of yourself for. Never giving up on myself. Beautiful. Best movie you've watched recently. Ooh. Have I watched a good movie recently? Um, 
I'm, I'm Harry Potter. <laughs> okay, there we go. Nice. <laughs> nice. What is love to you? Mm. Love. Okay, this is uh, one word. One word or one sentence. sentence. Yeah. Okay. Wholeness. Hmm. Annabelle's word on the rant was big. Hmm. I love wholeness. I love that. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's so. That's my favorite thing to ask people so far on this. I'm like, it is such a. Because it's something that you can't capture with words, but yeah. hearing people's like word for it, it's like, it's so many things. It's so yeah. cool. What, that, did, what was your answer? I said the truth. Do you <laughs> I said the truth. That's why the brand is called that. Because <laughs> I think it is. I think I it's the that. truest thing. Yeah. That once you get down, like doing the work we're talking about, you get down to the depths of it. It's like, it's just, love. it's love. Love is there. Yeah. And if it's not love mm-hmm. and you're in the descent, the all the things that are in the descent are wanting to be called back to love exactly so yeah this is all about love love that's what we're that's the game we're playing (laughs) so yeah yeah, last question is how can people find you and work with you um so my i'm mainly on instagram and then my website and instagram are both the adeptist so my website is theadeptist.com my Instagram is just at the adeptist and yeah, I offer one-to-one consulting as well as, uh, I do workshops. I'm going to start doing a monthly workshop. I'm wanting to get more consistent. And then I also offer trainings and courses, group programs as well. If you want more of a group experience versus like a one-to-one experience. Um, yeah. Awesome. Last thing I'll say is the Adeptus in case we'll, I haven't published any of the podcasts yet. So hopefully we're going to be able to link things in the description. That's the plan. So yeah. you can look to the, to the, to the description, but if you're looking for Elizabeth's Instagram, that's the Adeptus, T H E A D E P T I S T the Adeptist, right? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And the website too. So if you look <laughs> that up on Google, you can find her there and yep. yeah. Yeah. I think that that's all we got, right? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, this is great. of course. Absolutely loved having you on. I'm sure we're going to for sure do one with you and Danielle, Elizabeth's partner at some point. So this won't be the last yeah. time Elizabeth comes around. We're keeping <laughs> her. So, all right. Thanks, y'all. And thank you. peace and love now more than ever.